Let us now look at the practical aspects to keep in mind when planning the experiment for evaluation of linearity. We will look at type of the calibration samples, the concentration range, the levels of concentrations within this range, and finally the measurement protocol. First, in general we have two types of calibration samples we can choose from. For solvent calibration, we will use standard solutions which contain only the analyte or analytes of interest and do not contain any matrix components. Or alternatively, we can use matrix match calibration where the black matrix extract, which is preferably the same type as the sample, is used. In this case, the calibration solutions are as similar as possible to the samples we are analyzing. Using the matrix match calibration is suggested by several validation guidelines and it can be especially useful for, for a LCMS analysis where the matrix components can affect the signal of our analyte and therefore also affect the linearity. Therefore, if we still want to use the solvent calibration, we should check during the validation the calibration graphs in matrix and the calibration graphs in solvents to make sure that the matrix components do not affect the linearity. Secondly, when we have chosen the type of the calibration samples, we will choose the concentration range of interest. This should be appropriate for the method, meaning that we usually have an idea of the expected working range or the expected analyte uh, concentration in our sample. During the validation, this concentration range should be wider. For example, cover the expected working range plus minus 10 to even 20 percent, or cover 70 to 130 percent of the expected analyte concentration. Also, if matrix match calibration is used, the blank sample with no added analyte should also be included. Thirdly, when we have the concentration range, we should also consider the number of concentration levels within this range. Minimum of six concentration levels is acceptable by most of the validation guidelines. However, during validation, uh, more samples should be uh, used because during these experiments some of the concentrations may fall outside of the linear range and in the end there might not be enough data points to make conclusions about the linearity. Also these concentration levels should be evenly placed over the concentration range and it is a good idea to prepare them from independent dilutions uh, because when using consecutive dilutions, there might be accumulation of errors due to the sample preparation. And finally, when we have chosen and prepared our samples, we should also pay attention to the measurement protocol. And this should also be as similar as possible to the real life. It means the calibration samples should be analyzed in random order in contrast to analyzing them in increasing concentration order. The calibration samples should be placed between the samples we analyzed. So the instrument drift, coming from example the contamination of the ion source, would be taken into account. Also, the calibration solutions for measurement, uh, me measuring the linearity, uh, should be analyzed at least twice. In conclusion, when planning the experiment for evaluation of linearity, we should consider the type of the calibration samples we use, the concentration range and levels within this range, and finally, the measurement protocol.